hell yeah, brother. Welcome to the podcast. Stop Crying Poser, greatest podcast known to man, as voted by Felipe Nunez. That's right. Felipe Nunez. This guy has uh he has he has legs, but I think his legs stop at the knee. And this guy skates and he back 5 0 to Hollywood 16. I figured we would for once in our life uh kind of start this skating podcast off talking about skateboarding. So first, I want to thank everybody for being here. Late Bloomer, iBook Boy, WNSLV, Crept, Bruce Wayne, Vulgar Tech, Infamy, I Cannot Read, <laughs> and uh, anybody else that might be lurking around. I don't have very many topics today. Or, you know, I'm lying. I have, I have some topics today, but I don't have very many, um, like, lengthy topics. Because sometimes I can sit here and ramble and ramble and ramble about something for a really long time, but... Other times I can't. So, speaking of skateboarding, I'm going to give you guys a chance right now. We're kind of going to switch it up. We're going to start with the news. But the free Ninja Lifestyle stickers that we give away, every single podcast here is going to be a trivia question, skateboard related, also crime related. So the first person who answers this question correctly gets a Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack mailed directly to their USA address. <laughs> Maybe Puerto Rico. So, here is the question. I want to phrase this right. Which professional skateboarder recently is being held without bail after he allegedly punched and kicked a man from Wheaton, California, who later died? This person struck 23-year-old Josiah Casahoon in the head and then kicked him in the torso at a hotel. Who did that? Who did that? What pro skater that we all know and love is now uh, <laughs> is now being charged with first degree murder? Crept says Kennedy Terry Kennedy Crept is correct. He gets a free sticker pack mailed directly to his house. Let's go ahead and read the article while we're here. Although on my screen there's a giant video blocking most of the words. I don't know why they do that. A professional skateboarder from Long Beach, 36-year-old Terry Kennedy, is being held without bail after he allegedly punched and kicked a man who later died. Prosecutors allege that Kennedy struck 23-year-old Josiah Casahoon in the head and then kicked him in the torso at a hotel in Oak Brook Terrace on July 27th. The victim later died and an autopsy found the cause of death to be blunt force injuries. The DuPage County State's Attorney Office has charged the 36-year-old with first-degree murder. Kennedy, along with being a well-known skateboarder, has been featured in music videos by artists like Snoop Dogg, Pharrell Williams. He's also appeared in television shows like Viva La Bam and Rob Dyrdek's Fantasy Factory. Yeah, in Viva La Bam, they called him Compton-ass Terry. He also, what they didn't say here, he had his own BET reality show. I think it was called like Life of Terry. Or something like that. So there was a time in this guy's life where he made uh, pretty good money. And I read in another article, a TMZ article. This may not be true or not. But they said uh, this fight was over money. And somebody did a deep dive into Terry Kennedy's old pictures. And they found a, uh, a picture of this guy and the guy that he killed hanging out skateboarding together. So before Terry Kennedy beat his ass and killed him, they were actually friends. Uh, since it's about money, it leads me to believe that maybe this is, uh, maybe not so much a mental health issue, like, uh, Late Bloomer says in the chat, but it might be more of a, uh, a fall from grace issue. You get a guy who maybe one year, you know, maybe in 2010, this guy makes a million dollars and now 2020, he's making, you know, $15,000 a year. You know, barely enough to survive. I'm, I'm not saying that's true. I don't, I don't know the real story, but that's, that's if I had to make a guess, that's, that's where I would go. Let's not forget, skateboarders are like, skateboarders are shitty people, especially from this era. You guys need to look no further than, uh, than Steve Barrett. <laughs> no, I mean for real though, skateboarders, especially skateboarders that get successful, it's, it's no secret that. That they sort of, uh, you know, they they become like egotistical and narcissistic. And then when they fall from grace, you know, it's it's a lot of pressure. 
You know, it, it's just a lot of pressure just to go from one lifestyle to another. You know, going out to eat every day with the steak and the lobster, and then you get fucking downgraded to instant ramen. It's never a great place to be. I'm not saying that that's the case about Terry Kennedy. I'm just saying he was certainly, certainly way, way, way famous at one point. Like, easily a top five most famous skateboarders kind of situation. And then, uh, and then now, you know, I did a video of him getting kicked off Baker, and that was probably like six years ago. No one liked that video, by the way. I thought it was hilarious. It was a whole video about Terry Kennedy getting kicked off Baker. And then I <laughs> I invited him to ride for my brand, Cake Muscle. I was like, listen, if Baker won't, won't sponsor you, don't worry. You can always come over and you can ride for Cake Muscle. And obviously, that's like a hilarious joke because I don't run, you know, a, a million dollar skateboarding distribution fucking business. It was complete sarcasm. But then you got to remember that most of the internet is actually stupid. So all the comments are like, you know, he would never do that, right? You know, he would never go to a small company with just one employee. Are you stupid? Wow. Th that'd be a, such a bad business decision for Terry Kennedy. And I'm like, bro, it's a bad business decision for you to keep on living. Because it was very obviously a joke. Unless he wants to ride for Cake Muscle. It's, it's still out there. We can do a free, a free Terry board and with my dog's face on it. <laughs> oh, speaking of bad news, because <laughs> this is all kind of a bad news story. Uh, Murdy, if you guys are familiar with Murdy, the dog from Baker 3 who rides down the stairs, Murdy died. I don't know how Murdy died. I don't have all the details. I just found out yesterday on Instagram, but that was the OG skateboarding dog, man. This dog would skateboard down the stairs, skateboard down all these stairs, and then uh, Beagle or whoever, I just watched a video today of Beagle doing it, went up there, he films it, and then he goes and puts his hand out to the dog, and the dog high-fives him and then daps him. It's like, when a dog like that is gone, you gotta, you gotta realize that dog brought a lot of people a lot of joy. So the fact that this dog that I've never met, that I've never seen, is no longer with us that had this really cool talent of riding downstairs on a skateboard. It's kind of a sad, a sad thing. It's like uh it's like a great it's like a great comedian died or a great artist died. Anyways, moving on. How's you guys Friday going? Or maybe you're watching this on Sunday. By the way, we do this podcast. I don't think I went through my usual spiel today. We do this podcast every single Friday. 3.30 p.m. Pacific time right here on twitch.tv slash ninja lifestyle. Today I was woken up with uh, my phone going <coughs> and I have two phones here plugged in. One's for like playing music and playing on the internet and one's my regular phone with actual service. Bro, some kid went missing a thousand miles away and they sent an amber alert to every cell phone in Las Vegas. And that shit is so annoying. And not only did I get one, I got one Amber Alert at like 9 a.m. Then I got another one at like 9, 13 a.m. Then another one at like 9, 17 a.m. And I'm like, dude, at this point, dude, what, what happens happens. If the, kids, if, if the kids are out there missing, it, it happened. I used to be compassionate, but now I'm not allowed to sleep. Listen, I'm in my bed sleeping. The phone should have a setting to know if I'm sleeping. It should be like, oh, no activity for the past five hours. This guy's probably not, probably not on the highway looking around for fucking silver sedans, four doors, 2009 bullshit cars with two kids in the back. No, I'm in my bed sleeping. And I know I sleep in, but that's because I stay up really late. What I had to do is I had to turn the Amber Alerts off, man. They, uh, they really should have put more, they should have put more time into uh into that technology right because here we have the the big led signs right so if, if there's an amber alert it says it on the the freeway like overpass be like amber alert look out for this car and then they have it on the phone it should only it should only tell you an amber alert if if the phone knows you're moving because i am dead asleep three different times i'm sleeping having probably some great ass dream probably a really nice dream and now i don't have that nice dream. Maybe they don't have maps. 
Now, now, I, now it's over, right? Three fucking times. Three fucking times they gave me that fucking Amber Alert, dude. So that is, it, it's actually six times because I have two phones. Six times you had to tell me the two kids went missing a thousand miles away that probably aren't even in Las Vegas. Also, you know what? You know what I always wonder about? What? What? Uh, what makes it an Amber Alert? Kids go missing all the time. How come my phone's not going off every single day? There's always kids missing. Things like that. Maybe it's for uh, maybe it's for when you 100% know, like the the make and model of the car and you know the kids and you need a picture or something. Because I feel like people go missing all the time. I feel like if there was an Amber Alert every time someone went missing, there would be there'd be tons of them all the time, especially here in Las Vegas, dude. No, there's no such thing as like a couple that has a child that gets along. It it just doesn't exist. Every every household is like a single parent like household and shit kids go get fucked all the time oh man i don't mean kids get fucked all the time i mean kids get (laughs) i mean like the the state fucking lets down the children all the time (laughs) probably should have rephrased that differently they probably do get fucked all the time too see who do you just know somebody in like the government office who's like hey dude i need a favor i need an amber alert like oh well we got two we got two other kids missing nah dude i'll give you I'll give you $10,000 for my Amber Alert to wake up Steve. I need Steve, the guy in Northwest Las Vegas. I need us to wake him up six times. Okay, done. Done. Let's wake his ass up. $10,000. Send it to my Venmo. My God. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. (laughs) It's unfortunate that, you know, bad things happen. But the Amber Alert thing, they definitely, they need to put more time into that. So, what else happened this week? I uh, I got Netflix, right? Thanks to my Twitch chat. Somebody gave me their Netflix. And I've been watching uh, just random shit. Every, every show on there is fucking terrible, by the way. But I found one called, like, Fancy Fungi or something. It's this whole little mini documentary series about mushrooms. And it's not about, like, magic mushrooms that make you trip out. Although it does touch on that. It's more about how mushrooms are like super complex and they just have all this like commentary over these super fast motion mushrooms growing and then dying and bugs climbing on them and all this information about how trees can talk to each other through mushroom tentacles and whatever and i'm watching it and it's it's one of those things where it's like dude am am i am i too smart for this because there's no way that every person who's ever eaten a lion's mane mushroom got cured from cancer right but the guy that made this documentary he claims that he cured cancer by giving his mom some special mushroom extract okay maybe you did so why does cancer exist because now netflix came out with this documentary now we're gonna cure cancer probably not maybe your mom got lucky that's always my go-to but it also made me think is uh i want to go to like the farmer's market now i think they got one every maybe every wednesday because they have people here in Vegas where all they do is make mushrooms. I looked it up, lvmushrooms.com. You can buy like an ounce of of pink oyster mushrooms, an uh, ounce of lion's mane mushrooms. I'm trying to get a variety pack. So uh, it doesn't look like it's that much money either. Like a quarter ounce is like six bucks. Bro, I'm going in. I'm going in. Plus, if you get to know those guys really well, like, hey, dude, uh... I know you got good lion's mane mushrooms and those uh, those other shiitakes were really nice, but where do you keep the good stuff? <laughs> uh, I thought that was actually a funny part of the uh, the documentary. Also, is because they showed an old interview of the guy that the guy that narrates a lot of it, and he's like super like into mushrooms. He knows everything. He does like he has a laboratory and shit like that. Figures everything out. They're like so. Uh, how about the magic mushrooms? If I go to your house, can I try some of those? And he goes, I don't have any, but nature provides. <laughs> I'm like, bro, that's some fucking drug dealer shit. <laughs> that's some OG shit. He's like, you know, somewhere out in the desert out there, he has an underground bunker just called the fuck room. And he just goes in there and just trips out looking at tie dye pictures and listening to sounds of the universe volume two nightmare 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 it uh the documentary was really interesting the only reason i bring it up is because if you guys are into like any type of 
like nature documentary you guys should definitely check out that uh that documentary or whatever it is maybe like i don't know if you'd call it a documentary maybe like uh it kind of it kind of felt like something i'd watch at school but it was great i i watched the whole thing while i'm like playing on my phone because i could like you don't want to be too into it i can only watch a mushroom come out of the ground and grow in fast motion i can only watch it about 300 times before it starts to get old and that's all this thing is although some of it is uh i think the most interesting part of the documentary is this guy talks about the first time he tripped out on mushrooms he took entirely too much mushrooms and ended up in like a lightning storm although if he took that many mushrooms maybe there was no lightning storm oh big brain theory big brain theory in the house so you guys anyways if uh if you guys want to watch it i'm not going to spoil the story for you guys definitely go check it out so uh, my friend Ryan her birthday's coming up and she's invited all of her close friends to go on a cruise That's right a Las Vegas cruise It uh, it seems kind of fishy to me, but here's what it is Dine under the stars on Lake Mead on our lake. See what there's a period here. Oh wait dine under the stars on Lake Mead period on our Lake Mead night lights cruise you'll enjoy delightfully cooler temperatures and calm glassy waters definitely not glassy waters you're swimming in human shit but i go down here and as she's explaining to me this this birthday cruise she's like yeah dude three course meal you get to ride on this yacht three course meal open bar i look it up nope i look at the menu there's only four items on the menu so I don't, know, I don't know how the fuck you got three course meal when there's only four items on the menu and you can only order one. It's a one course meal with butter and bread and a dessert. That's what it is. Also, no open bar. Also, $80. Plus more, plus more, more if I want, if I want a little spritzer. If I want a champagne or some cider, it's going to be an extra like $20. Jesus Christ. Then they're staying at lake mead hotel i don't know what that is i don't want to know what that is it's probably going to be on some some like murder mystery documentary on how cockroaches infest human brains i'm not checking that shit out i don't want to tell her i i, I, I gotta break the news to her I gotta, I gotta break the news to her probably today i think we're all gonna hang out me and nick stams and her and uh hopefully her brother comes out but it does does not sound fun she said she went to it before also i would have reconsidered had this menu had like a steak and potatoes but it doesn't it has slow roasted prime rib prime rib can be can be one of two things it can be great or it can be fucking absolutely horrible and i'm not risking my 80 dollars to do that you know what i could also do though i could go get i could go get two 211 steel reserves fruit punch style i could go to smith's grocery store i could spend Sixteen dollars on a nice filet mignon. I can get my own smashed potatoes and uh, Maybe maybe something a little savory. Maybe some mac and cheese. Ooh, oh oh, oh. And then I could go to a fucking grass field and walk my dog and I'd have just as much fun I think I'd have just as much fun or I could go to Lorenzi Park the super ghetto park I would have to pack one of my one of my bigger pistols because it is a super ghetto park. And I could walk my dog around the little man-made lake filled with goose and bum shit. Which also would be a nice night under the stars. With calm, muddy waters. <laughs> I could do all that stuff. Oh yeah, Late Bloomer says, or I could go to the grass field and trip on my new mushrooms. That I got from that guy that I met at the farmer's market. Who I haven't met yet. But I will meet him soon. Because I'm going to look at the fucking farmer's market. All right, let's move on to some news. We got missing cars, money, leave. What? what? Missing cars, comma, money, leave. Dozens of customers frustrated with Las Vegas Auto Shop. I don't know how to read. So let's try. Missing cars, missing money, and dozens of car repair customers convinced they've been ripped off. Frustration is through the roof, and it's all directed at the same Las Vegas Auto Shop. Back to you, Steve. 
Customers claim reliable automotive repair on Rancho Drive and Decatur Boulevard is just the opposite of what its name suggests. 13 Action News spoke to three customers who said the lot surrounding reliable automotive repair was always full of vehicles waiting to be serviced. That is until one day when they showed up and the shop was closed. The owners were gone and all of the vehicles have been towed off the lot, leaving the customers down thousands of dollars with no repairs to show for it. Rihanna Smith says she's down about $5,000 for repairs that were promised by Reliably but were never made to her Chrysler 300. The owner just stopped answering the phone, stopped texting. He wouldn't come to the shop and talk to me. How am I supposed to get my kids around, get them back and forth to school? I've lost three jobs during this situation. <laughs> what? What? How'd you lose three jobs? Family members, I couldn't attend their funerals due to no transportation hold on a second it costs five dollars to ride the bus for two straight hours non-stop transfers so you're telling me a family member died and you couldn't cough up five dollars i don't know if i believe that the single mother of six oh man thank god that we have government for you to rip off the single mother of six who can't keep a job and lost three jobs and doesn't go to her family's funeral <laughs> sounds Sounds like a really cool person. Brought the car to Reliable to repair the air conditioning back in May. Wow. But when she finally tracked it down months later, the back seat was full of spare car parts and the engine was gone. Wow. It's wrong. There's no other way to feel other than played. It's business, you know what I mean? You put your trust into a business expecting the job to get done. It's a shop, I didn't go to somebody's house or their garage, I went to a shop where you get a warranty and all that, nothing. I didn't get nothing, I got played. They took my money and ran with it. She's hardly the only one. Okay, let's go ahead and scroll down. Based on keys left behind and toes, sorry, cars towed off the lot, toes that are on the lot. <laughs> People's feet are all over this fucking lot, man. There's too many feet. Too many feet everywhere you look. Feet, feet, feet. Tony, <laughs> Tony estimates at least 100 customers never received the repairs they were promised. If each customer was charged an average of $5,000, that's a half million dollars missing. Most of it in cold, hard cash. Should have used a credit card, man. I lost three credit cards this month. Tony says he feels sorry for the customers, but he's not surprised since he said he's lost at least $25,000 in missed rent payments and lawsuits filed against the owners. Oh, so this is probably the landlord. I think I skipped that part of this. So they ripped off everybody, the customers and the landlord. Wow. I feel very bad about it to myself because I could not collect my money at all. I'm in a hole and also so are other people. Anybody who needs any help from me, as the owner of the property, I'm trying to help each and every customer. I'm sorry for those customers and what happened. If you're one of the victims who's still looking for your vehicle or your keys, here's where to look. Titan Towing, my buddy works for them, oh boy. On Losey Road or the tow truck company or uh, Arco gas station, whatever. Wait a minute, reliable automotive repair at, at Ranch Drive and Decatur, Rancho? I might have, wait, did I? I might have took my car here once. Is there a picture of this place? There is not. Wow, nice fucking website, you piece of shit. Speaking of unreliable car bullshit, I got a parking ticket about a month ago and I 100% should not have got the ticket. I should not have gotten this parking ticket. It was only for $25, but I should not have gotten it. I was parked completely legally and I went to use the the meter to pay for my parking just in case. I tried to use the meter, meter was broken. I went to the other meter, tried to use the meter, the second meter was broken. That's okay, I scanned. I scanned the meter to go onto the website so I could pay via the internet. I go, the website's down, it says you cannot pay at this time. I say, oh, I can't pay at this time. That's interesting. Then I look up at the sign and a sign in the parking lot says free parking after six. 
I look at my clock, I go, oh, it's after six. So I go have fun, I come back to my car, I have a ticket. So I go and investigate it. I file an appeal with all my proof, a picture of the sign, a picture of the website, the rules on the website that say parking lot is, is, uh, is open after six. I screenshot everything. I send everything. And they denied my appeal yesterday. And I was furious. I'm furious. And I don't, I don't see, I don't want to incriminate myself right now, but I just, I feel like they might, they might have to repair some items on their lot that cost more than $25. I don't know how that would happen, but it might happen somehow. Uh, also, I have a second appeal. I, I will fight the system. I will clog the system. I will Karen, I will Karen my way through the government if I fucking have to. But my second appeal, I have to show up in person, which I fucking will. Thanks to Muy Bastante, she's a lawyer. She went to the, the city's website and found out that I can do a second appeal. And dude, I am, I'm ready to do it. I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna take a bunch of pictures. I'm gonna go to the same meters I went to and I guarantee you those meters are still gonna be broken. Because this is all part of an elaborate scam for Vegas to get all this money. And it makes me so, I, I, wrote, I responded to the email, I said, you guys are criminals. That's all I wrote. Because at first I was defeated, and then I got this. Then I got this second wave of like, nope, nope. I'm I'm going to fight this to tooth and nail, as they say. It's uh, it's so lame, dude. I'm gonna go back if I go downtown tonight, which I might not do. I might go tomorrow, which is gonna be part of this next topic, Guns and Roses. If I go tomorrow, I'm gonna go back to that parking lot, and I'm gonna take pictures of all the signs. Uh, of both of the meters the sign that says parking because they claim that the sign that I took a picture of is not part of the parking lot where I parked at no 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 idiot no no it definitely is you piece of shit you guys are not gonna pull that little fast one on me have me what do they call that gaslighting have me believing that my story's wrong bitch no I know I was right and I was suspicious about these fucking criminal ass Las Vegas uh, ticket people. I was suspicious because I've heard stories. How else would I know to take pictures of everything had I not already been suspicious? Can you answer me that, City of Las Vegas Parking Department? Can you answer me that? Why, why would I feel so insecure about you guys, like your ability to not break the law? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to fight this thing. I'm gonna fight this thing. Uh, by the way, tomorrow, tomorrow is a uh, former drummer, co-songwriter, and founding member of Guns N' Roses, Steven Adler, will perform downtown, Fremont Street Experience. He will perform at 9 p.m. That's gonna be a great time. Welcome to the jungle, sweet child of mine, Paradise City, Mr. Brownstone, Rocket Queen. He, uh, he's just the drummer though, right? I don't know who the other people are, because I imagine, I imagine it's not gonna be anyone original. Are some of these people dead? I'm not a huge Guns N' Roses fan, right? I just like all these, these hair metal bands. Maybe I'm not a fan. Maybe I'm just an enjoyer of the music. Because it's always, it's always when I say like, oh yeah, I'm a fan of Guns N' Roses. There's always one douchebag who's like, name three albums and then uh, name the person who wrote the third song. And then also what brand of hair sanitizer does, uh, does the guitarist wear? And also what size shoe is the, uh, the, the bassist's uh, wife's foot size? And I'm like, okay. I guess I'm not a fan fan, but bro, Sweet Child of Mine comes on, I'm fucking singing. So what do you call me? A fake fan? You piece of shit? Okay, I'm a fake fan. There's gonna be a whole lot of fake fans at this fucking concert, so you better get used to it, goddammit. I'm excited to go though. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll check it out because this whole thing's free. The only thing I'm worried about is even at 9 p.m. it's gonna be close to 100. It's gonna be close to 100 degrees and if people are dancing, they're gonna be super sweaty. And it, although it is outdoors, it's covered. So whenever you get that many people together and they sweat and then it becomes, it becomes humid. I don't know if you guys have ever been to like, I don't know, like a big festival or a big concert. Everyone gets together and they start sweating. The sweat then goes into the air and then you're just breathing other people's ball sack juice. Yeah, I said it. You're breathing Guns N' Roses nut juice. And all you want to do is hear Sweet Child of Mine. So maybe I'll be far in the back. Maybe I'll bring something to stand on. Maybe like a milk crate or something. 
but that was uh that's on the on the schedule for tomorrow maybe i might not go i might not go because fridays fridays get really like me and my friends go out fridays we drink and we gamble and we get fucked up and sometimes i'm so hungover on saturday that i don't actually like leave my couch at all i'll walk the dog i'll come back i'll lay down and i just lay down for the entire day and then right around like midnight the next day is when i start to feel okay after I've stuffed my face with tons of junk food. By the way, guys, I'm fatter now than ever. I lost like six pounds like a couple months ago, gained it all right back. Back back again with a vengeance. Maybe I'll go do some push-ups after this podcast. Maybe not. It's my choice. So, last topic of the day, man. It's going to be old man ninja complains about the skate park again. We've been here before. We've had the same topic over and over again. On Friday, I go to the skate park. I try to land my trick. I see six kids sitting down with skateboards. Not a single one of them skating. Just sitting, chatting, talking. I'm going to tell you guys one thing that's that's become my, my pet peeve, right? And uh, I don't like... Okay, I already don't like people that go to the skate park and just sit down and play on their phones because I feel like it's just a waste of space. They built all these obstacles to be... To be for tricks and rolling on and fun and exercise that's why they built these things right you're sitting on a on a bench that's made for grinding and sliding and things like that so when you show up to the skate park just to gossip about school about oh that girl likes me no she doesn't like you dude no one would like you well your shoes are stupid well your fucking hair's dumb oh blah 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 it wouldn't bother me if you guys were having the conversation at a normal like volume, but I'm trying really hard to land the skateboarding trick at the skateboarding park where I went to ride my skateboard so I could be skateboarding, you piece of shit. If it's not the sit park, it's not the sit and gossip like a pussy park, that's over there under the pussy tree next to all the other fucking gossipers and bullshittery of nothingness. That's where you should be. But instead, you've brought that fuckery into my skate park. You don't own the skate park, man. Okay, so it's just they go there, they just gossip and bullshit. Oh, and they're loud as fuck. They're loud as fuck. And one kid, dude, it usually wouldn't bother me, but it was this fat blonde kid. And I, 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 I hope that no one shows this kid this podcast. But if you see it, so be it, man. This fat blonde kid, just like super non-athletic scooter riding piece of shit butterball, fucking Chris Farley over here fucking tumbles his way into the park and then he's like it usually doesn't bother me he's dropping the n-word over and over and over again not the hard n-word but the soft n-word but he's white and all of his friends are white and the only reason it bothered me it usually would never bother me it bothered me a because he was the loudest person at the park the loudest by far everyone else is talking he's being extremely loud using this word over and over again which again would never bother me but I know for a fact, I can, I can look at people and look into their soul. If a black person walked by, he would have fucking, he would have piped down real quick. He would have got real quiet. He would have fucking, he would have chose his words more smoothly. And I don't know why that bothers me. I think it bothers me because deep down, maybe you know that, that this, this communication style isn't for you. Maybe, maybe you know that this is not for you, right? And uh, you could tell the kid was just trying to impress his friends. He's like, oh, man, I smoked some weed the other day, you know. And I'm like, this kid's got to be in, like, seventh grade, like, sixth grade or something. I smoked weed, man. I got some weed from my friend. They're like, oh, yeah, you know what? My mom gives me blunt wraps. And I'm like, I can overhear. I can overhear this conversation. Why can I overhear this conversation in the middle of my skateboarding tricks? It's because it's loud as fuck. Okay? It's because they're being extremely loud and distracting. And, uh whatever i eventually got to land my tricks which that video came out today i i forgot to check the comments on it hopefully uh hopefully you guys liked my trick i did sort of a a sweeper to deck check (laughs) i don't know what these comments are going to say because i think i think in the description i wrote name this trick so i'm sure it's going to be a bunch of like stupid ass trick names anyways dude it's just like every time i go to a skate park i get it it's hot outside okay you don't necessarily want to skate that much cool Go to the convenience store, sit down, drink a soda, and then when the sun goes down, come to the skate park. Or go sit under a tree. Or go do some graffiti or smoke some weed somewhere. Go do fucking something else. (laughs) Like, 
You don't have to be here distracting the one person who's using the skate park for, for, for why it's there. You know what I mean? It also got me thinking, is there anyone... So the skate park I was at is called Bunker Skate Park. And I used to I used to skate there all the time as a kid. Like, like every single day. Like four days a week I was there. Maybe more. And uh, a lot of my friends. Nick G was there every day. You know, Tex was over there all the time. A lot of that Richie was there every day. The same group of people that I sort of hang out with on my channel. They were there every single day. So we used to go there and we kind of like... We kind of like took pride in the fact that we were all from the skate park, you know, not like a gang thing, but like a man, we, we skate bunker. We're from bunker park. You know, we go to little competitions or video premieres. We all sit together. This is the bunker crew. You know what I mean? Now it, it would be fucking embarrassing. It, it's these kids have to be embarrassed to be like, yeah, I'm from bunker crew. I'm, I skate bunker every day. That's crazy. Cause all you do is sit. And fucking talk about weed. Don't even smoke it. That's that's your proud that's your proud skate park moment. That's your legacy. Being the fat kid who's been skating for three years and still can't kickflip. Wow, wow. Re gotta hand it to you guys. You guys have really, really done a lot with this legacy that is called Bunker Skate Park. Anyways, I guess uh, since the podcast is over, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts, especially since some of you guys are. Maybe not my age. Some of you guys are actually older than me, but you guys have been skateboarding for a long time. So I wonder if you guys have seen sort of this, this culture shift behind like back in the day, the skate park is all about getting better and being the best and hitting the biggest rail. And maybe you wanted to smoke weed too. Maybe you want to hang out and smoke weed and, and gossip. But in between all the gossiping and smoking weed and your friends fucking smoking meth and the fights on a daily basis, and and the skateboarding tricks and the gossip and the little and the fun shit and the eating the food and the throwing the beer bottles at each other still still skateboarding would happen now now the new cultural shift is just go there and sit and and gossip about who has a crush on you who has a crush on you i don't know let's smoke some weed i don't have any weed well i guess we can't whatever i uh i don't know it's just it's the word embarrassing is the correct word, you know? Cause I could tell a kid right now, I was like, yeah, man, I've been skating this park for a long time, man. I, I rep bunker. And then I look, I go, but it, but not this, but not this. It's different. This is different than what it used to be. <laughs> I don't know. It's, and this is not me. This is not a pussification like rant. This is not me saying the kids are supposed to be like tougher or cooler or, or whatever. It's more about just like, why are you there? There's plenty of other like fun places you could be within a quarter mile that you could skate to or walk to. Um, they'd be more comfortable. You could be as loud as you want and you wouldn't be bothering anybody. That's, that's my concern. Maybe it comes down to entitlement. Maybe they just feel like, you know, like, well, I'm, I get a gold medal for everything I do. And this is my skate park because I'm sitting here. Yeah, but you're not skating. I don't want to. I don't want to and I don't have to. Nah. <laughs> I figure that's what it is, man. Which even even on that note, embarrassing is the correct word. But that's all I have. Uh, that's all I have for the podcast today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you missed the podcast or if you tuned in late and you missed the first half, uh, this podcast gets uploaded on Sundays. Early Sunday morning on Podbean, YouTube, iTunes, maybe some other things like that. Also, uh, I appreciate everybody who supports this podcast or this twitch channel in any way every single friday 3 30 p.m pacific time we uh podcast here on twitch.tv slash ninja lifestyle but we also play games we also get drunk we dance around we suffocate flamingos faces yeah we raise money for gambling and cancer on different days most of the time so uh if you guys aren't following make sure to follow also check out my youtube channel and uh, let me know your thoughts. Amber Alerts, are they overdoing it? Have you guys seen this mushroom documentary? Is it good or does it suck? The cruise, should I go on the cruise? Not enough booze. If I go, will I lose? I don't know, man. Tell me about your parking ticket scenarios. Have you had a parking ticket scenario? Have you won? Have you bothered to try? Also, let me know your thoughts on Terry Kennedy. <laughs> I don't know what thoughts you would have on Terry Kennedy. Like the facts are there, this guy's this guy's going to prison, man. Bye. Hope that doesn't happen to me. My fall from grace. Imagine. Imagine Ninja Lifestyle. 
a uh, former former decent skateboarder ninja lifestyle arrested for murdering a scooter rider <laughs> for for failing to tail whip within 30 tries more at 11 anyways you guys have a great weekend uh i'll stick around for a little bit maybe a post show but i gotta go grab my phone check my text messages and whatnot so stick around if you're watching this live if you're not watching it live hope you had a great time uh have a great weekend safe weekend don't drink too much but you know what don't drink too little either we should smoke some weed we don't have any weed <laughs> no.